Today I want to make a video dealing with whether a Christian can live a life free from sin and a life of holiness unto God. You know, you hear that all the time that we all have to sin uh, every single day uh, in thought, word, and deed, and that no man can um, live a life free from sin. And we all know that Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And uh, many times that's used as a, as a way or as an excuse to continue to live a life uh, of sin. But the, the Bible actually teaches the opposite. And I want to go over some scriptures today to help you with that, to encourage you and to edify you uh, that you can live a life free from sin in victory over sin uh, and that's pleasing to God. And uh, really, that's what a Christian's life should be. A Christian's life should not be a life of defeat day after day, uh, being defeated by sin. Uh, but a Christian's life should be a life of victory over sin through Yeshua the Messiah. We all need uh, Yeshua. We all need Jesus Christ uh, to help us set us to help set us free from sin. And uh, so I'm going to go over some scripture here today to help us understand that. You know, First John five three says, "For this is the love of God, that we should keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous." So the the commandments that God gives you gives me uh, are not meant for us to are not meant to keep us in bondage or to hurt us or to be some sort of a weight or burden. In fact, uh, Yeshua says for us to take His yoke, for His yoke is light and easy. But, you know, the yoke of sin is heavy. I mean, how can you live a life uh, knowing that you have to give in and be defeated uh, to sin every single day? You know, it says in 1 John that Yeshua was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. And what are the works of the devil? Well, we know that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that only comes through sin. So if Yeshua came to destroy the works of the devil, which is sin in your life, then as a Christian, that is something that we should be able to overcome through Yeshua the Messiah. And he tells us that we should be overcomers, that we should do, we are more than conquerors through him, and we need him in all these things. You know, it says in the book of John, we'll go to John 14, 15. John 14, 15 says, this is uh, Yeshua talking. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. So Jesus is telling his disciples, his apostles, and the followers uh, that he has, that if you want to show your love to God, if you want to show your love to him, then you must keep his commandments. And faith is more than just believing or having a trust in Yeshua, faith is also being faithful. Just as you would be faithful to your wife or to your husband, um, it, that entails fidelity, which means that you would not commit adultery against them. You're faithful to that one person and you would not uh, cheat on them or commit adultery. And that's the same principle that we see in the scriptures when we're talking about having faith or being faithful to Christ. If you're faithful to the Messiah, then you won't commit spiritual adultery, which means you won't commit sin. You won't stray away from him into the world. You'll be totally committed to him. And it says, if you love him, then you would keep his commandments. And his commandments are not, as I mentioned in the, the first scripture, they're not grievous. They should not be a burden. You know, he says that we should not steal. We shouldn't lie. We shouldn't commit adultery. We shouldn't murder. There's nothing in those commandments uh, that God gives us that should be a burden to us. In fact, if we're keeping those commandments, then we would never need jails. We would never need to lock our doors at night. Uh, we could trust every, you know, the people that we uh, do see on a daily basis. We would be able to live a life of peace and harmony. So his commandments are not grievous. And if we love him, we would keep his commandments. And uh, John 14, 21 says this, it says, he, hath, he that hath my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. 
And he that loves me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. So here we see him going a little further than what he said in verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Here in verse 21 says, He that keeps my commandments, that my Father will love him, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. And then in John 15, 14, uh, Yeshua says this, Ye are my friends if you do whatever I command. Are you doing everything that Yeshua commands you? Because if, you, if you're not, then Yeshua himself says that you're not his friend. But you can be his friend if you are in obedience to Yeshua. You know, he didn't come to keep the law for us. That he did everything perfectly for us. Did Yeshua keep the law? Absolutely he did. But he didn't keep the law uh, for us, he kept the law so that he may be a perfect sacrifice that we may have a chance to be reconciled back to God, that we may be able to repent of our sins and live a life holy and acceptable to God. That was the reason for his uh, sacrifice on the cross. But he didn't keep the law that we should not have to keep it ourselves. The law is good, uh, it says in the book of uh Psalms. In fact, if you want to read Psalms 119, the entire chapter, you see David speaking about God's law, his precepts, his commandments, that they are good. There's, there's nothing wrong with God's law. It's where we have gone astray. And uh, the other scripture I wanted to go over is 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter two, verses three through five, it says this. And this is a uh, good uh, passage here to test ourselves to see if we are actually Christians, if we're living a life um, that the way God asks us to live. Chapter two, verse three. And hereby we do know that we know him, speaking about Yeshua, if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. So the test to know if you are a Christian, a true follower of Yeshua, is if you are keeping his commandments. If you are, then God's love is perfected in you. But if you're not keeping his commandments, in, in other words, it says, if you, are, if you are proclaiming to know Yeshua, but you're not keeping his commandments, then the book of John, God's very word says that those people are liars and the truth is not in them. And so that's a test to know if you are a Christian, if you are truly following the Messiah. Uh, if you want to turn over to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, uh, beginning in verse 15. What then, shall we, what then shall we sin, because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So here, Paul is saying that you, you can serve two servants. You can either serve sin, which was going to lead to death, or you can serve obedience, or you can serve uh, righteousness, obedience, which will lead unto righteousness. Uh, verse 17, But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart, that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. So here we see in verse 17, the, the Apostle Paul is saying that God is being thanked that though you were once servants to sin, but now you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Which form of doctrine? 
the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you're being obedient to his commandments. And now you've been, you have been made free from sin, and now you have become servants of righteousness. So if you're living a life of sin, the only where that's going to lead is to death. It cannot lead to righteousness. But here it says, but if you obey from the heart and you're living a life holy and, and separate unto God, then that will lead to righteousness. And that's what the scriptures are teaching us here. And in verse 22, it says, but now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. So what is the end? What is the everlasting life uh, come as a result of? It's come. It's coming from the fruit of holiness. So if you are living a life of righteousness and holiness, then you will produce fruit of holiness. And the end of that is going to be uh, eternal life. And verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through the Lord, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So you have two, two options. Either it's the wages of sin is going to lead to death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So those are your two options. You know, and the, the devil, it says that uh, he came, as I mentioned earlier, that he came, that Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of the devil in your life, which is sin. The devil couldn't do any worse than to sin every day in thought, word, and deed. He could not do any worse. So as a Christian, our life should be the opposite of that. Our life should not be uh, sinning every day in thought, word, and deed. It should be a life of obedience unto Christ. And um, the, the other scripture I wanted to read is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 6. And um, in verse 9. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So here it's giving a non-exhaustive list of, of these people that are not going to inherit life, everlasting life, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. And some of the ones that it has on here are fornicators, idolaters, um, drunkards, revilers, um, effeminate, which is homosexuals. So these are people that are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. But in the very next verse, it says, and such were some of you, but ye were washed but ye were sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. So these people in, in, the, uh, in Corinth, Paul is saying here that uh, the, the, the words that we just went over, the people that we just went over, drunkards, fornicators, idolaters, uh, adulterers, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. But then he goes on to say that, they, that some of the people there were those things, past tense. But what happened to them? They were sanctified, they were justified, and they were washed by the Lord Jesus Christ, by Yeshua the Messiah. So here we have Paul giving us clear indication that although we were once sinners, if you are washed and justified uh, by Jesus Christ, then you won't do the, those things anymore. You have been set free from sin and you have become a servant of righteousness, as he goes on to say, in the book of Romans. And in 1 Corinthians uh, 10, 13, we have God's promise on this. And uh, so that God's promise tells us that it is possible to live this way. So we have these scriptures that I just laid out that if we love God, we will keep his commandments, um, that we can be a, a live a life free from sin. Um, and do we have God's promise on that? We absolutely do. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says this, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to men. 
But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. This is a uh, beautiful promise, and I, I pray that that uh, you you go over these verses, and especially this one here, because it, it's very edifying, and it's a beautiful promise that God gives us, that no matter the temptation, uh, friends, that you're facing today, or no matter the temptations that you face on a daily basis, uh, God's promise is that He is there with you when you are being tempted, and that the temptation that you are having it's not just isolated to you. Others have gone through the same temptation. In fact, the book of Hebrews says that, that uh, Yeshua went through the temptations that he went through so that uh, we may be able to overcome just like he did, so that we may be overcomers just like Yeshua, our Savior. And he is telling us that uh, the temptations that we have, others have had the same temptation. It's not just you. And God is there with you when you're being tempted. God is faithful and he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. What a beautiful promise that God has given you and God has given me. That every time that we face temptation, God is always there. You know, being tempted is not a sin. Yeshua was tempted in the wilderness by Satan, but he, he did not sin. And, and it goes the same with us. Don't ever think that, that you being tempted or being led, trying to be led astray is, is sin. It's not. Because it, God's promise says, God's promises tell us that when you are tempted, that he is faithful and he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. But with that temptation, God will provide a way to escape every single time. When you are in the middle of that temptation, whatever it is, lust, hatred, anger, uh, filthy words, whatever it is, that God is there with you. He's faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. And he will always provide a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So there you have it. God's promise to you is that he is there all the time. He does not want you to sin. He wants you to be washed and justified by Jesus Christ. He wants you to live a life free from sin and a life serving him of obedience that leads unto righteousness. You know, it says, um, in, it says in the book of John, the most famous verse in the Bible, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, that whosoever shall, shall believe in him shall have shall not perish but have everlasting life so you have God's promise that um, if you are believing in him which means that you have to obey it's not just a belief and that's it it's a belief that um, that shows fruit a belief that shows obedience then uh, you will not perish but you will have everlasting life and so I hope these scriptures have uh, edified you I hope that um, you understand now that you don't have to live the way that the world tells you to live. And a lot of people will say this. A lot of professing Christians will, will try to tell you that uh, you have to sin every day, that we're all just sinners. But the scriptures say the exact opposite. It says that the sinners, the ungodly, will suffer the fate of the people like Sodom and Gomorrah. And what happened to the people in Sodom and Gomorrah? They were wiped out. They were wiped off the face of the planet. God's consuming fire destroyed them. And that's the example of the people that, that live. That's the example of what's going to happen to the people that live ungodly. So there's a distinction between sinners and the ungodly and the righteous that is going to lead unto holiness, that's going to lead unto everlasting life. You can't be a sinning saint. It's impossible. Or you can't be a saintly sinner. It cannot happen. You're either one or, you, or the other. And um, so I hope this teaching has edified you. I hope that you go over these scriptures that I have laid out. And um, God bless you. And you guys have a good day.